So thank you everybody for attending. Um, good turnout considering that it's Thursday, the last day of the summit, and it's the second to last session. So I'm glad you all were able to uh, have enough stamina to make it through three, what have been three good days and uh, attend our session. So I'm Jacob Sandowski from Intel. And I'm Pino De Candia from Mitokura. And we want to talk about some fun and exciting work that we've been doing to bring network security inside uh, private clouds that are orchestrated by OpenStack. So that's what, that's what we're here to talk about. Right, so you guys have all been part of what has been this evolution of the enterprise data center from fo something that was focused on supporting you know, traditional hardware, uh, where the applications were something that was just running on top of them, and the people who are running the infrastructure are thinking about maintaining the infrastructure, and where virtualization has taken that and made it more about uh, utilization of your resources. And now we're in this era, and this is what, what OpenStack is really driving, is a software-defined uh, infrastructure era where we care about the applications. That's where the business uh, value is derived from. And these things that they use, storage, network, compute, and in our opinion, security, are key to making those applications available and keeping them up and running and happy and, and healthy. Okay. So one of the things about these new types of environments is you operators and people who are working on the, on the development side know is that right, if you look at the, at the structure of such a cloud, right, typically from a security perspective, you think, okay, we have a perimeter, there's a firewall there, it's inspecting traffic and making decisions on whether to block or allow that traffic through. This is traffic going out to somewhere else in the network, going to somewhere in the data center, it's a gateway. So, uh, what happens to the rest of the traffic that never sees this gateway? So this is a, a visibility issue. And when you're thinking about how do I secure my whole data center, how am I securing my network, you need to think about securing this portion of the traffic that never sees appliances that are designed to inspect the traffic, right? So we need to get at this 80% or so of the traffic that is swirling around inside the cloud going from VM to VM, maybe those VMs are on the same hypervisor, maybe they're on adjacent physical hosts, doesn't matter. If they, if they don't see the perimeter firewall, you have no visibility into them. And there's other problems that we know about that we have to deal with that are related to the elasticity and the dynamic nature of these software-defined infrastructure environments. And that's workload migration and like the elasticity point, right? You might be bursting number of instances that are running your application and so we have to think about how do we deal with that from a security perspective. And we know, and I wouldn't be here talking to you, if physical hardware appliances that are available for purchase today from vendors like Intel Security and, uh, and others could solve this problem for you, right? Okay, so when we were thinking about, and this project started as an initiative in, in Intel Security, um, but has now moved over into, into the core of Intel, what are, we, what are the kinds of problems and the challenges that we're trying to solve when we're thinking about security in these areas? Right, one is this east-west traffic, traffic that's swirling around inside the, uh, the data center that's not seeing any of your routers or firewalls or other security devices that you might have from the physical world. One of the problems that we need to deal with is this workload migration and protecting new workloads like the elasticity requirement. And of course, acknowledging that not all of the workloads or applications or whatever you want to call them have the same security requirements. So there's a variety of them, and that means that we need to have some way to map policy to security policy to these workloads if we want to protect them, because they need to be protected specially. Like let's say you have workloads that are dealing with PCI compliant data or HIPAA regulated data or things like that. And, and, and different regulations I think around the world, but those are, those are the ones from the United States that I'm familiar with. So we have to support multiple security functions and we need to support, support multiple security requirements. That's policy mapping, okay? And the other thing that we need to think about when we start formulating solutions to these problems, which well, as we get a little further down the path in the presentation, we'll talk about how we wanna use virtual security appliances, virtual network functions that are security related, right? Like IPS, next gen firewall, things like that, is if we're gonna scale out to, to meet all of the demands of inspecting inside the data center, inspecting in a distributed way, being able to apply these policies, now we run into uh, what I believe is an orchestration problem. So I'm 
proposing a solution that says, okay, I want to scale out my security workloads. These are security VNFs, you can think of them as. Um, and then I have to manage them, I have to provision them, I have to configure them. I have to hook, up, hook them up in service function chains, right? I have to insert the services. That's what Pino is going to talk about, how, uh, how Metacur is doing that. Um, but I have to manage the security at scale. And that's, a, that's an interesting problem. And that's a problem that, uh, that we felt the solution to over at Intel was this thing that, that we call the Intel Security Controller. And it's, I guess it's more than a controller now. It's, it's become, we're trying to make it as a platform. And what that is, is an abstraction between the virtual infrastructure management pieces, which are OpenStack and an SDN controller, like Metacora, like MetoNet, and the security function themselves. That could be something like the McAfee virtual IPS or McAfee virtual next-gen firewall or any third-party function that is integrated with the Intel security controller platform. We are uh, open to integration with uh, other security VNF vendors, by the way, if you're, if you're looking. So, um, so one of the things that we want to do is make sure that the security, the virtual security functions don't have to worry about what type of environment they're plugged into. They need to focus on doing their job and doing it well and not consuming too many resources. So, uh, so we come from, from that security background, and so we wanted to make sure that, that they just receive packets and know how to map policy to those traffic flows and enforce the policy, drop or allow or alert based on the security needs. And, and we don't want to, and we want to enable them to plug into as many types of, uh, of OpenStack environments as, or, and, and with SDN controllers as possible. And so you'll see in a few slides how, how we're planning on attacking that. And of course, since we're Intel, we want it all to run best on Intel. And the appliances that we started with, which are the, the in-house ones from, from McAfee, from Intel Security, are optimized to run in x86 uh, computing environments, so run on Intel architecture. They leverage a lot of the built-in goodness that's there, things like DPDK and Hyperscan and AES and I, some of the uh, feature sets that you may be familiar with. And, and, the, and the point is that they run x86 native code so that they run best in these environments. And we want to help other third-party virtual security functions and, and other virtual functions in general to do the same thing and to make them orchestratable by us, by us being, by the Intel security controller, so that they can be easily plugged into these types of, of uh, OpenStack environments and utilized uh, in service chains and, and made available so that, that you can make security services available to your workloads as necessary. Okay, All right. so like I said, we're building this platform and this is kind of how we see it playing out, right? We wanna support as many hypervisor options, as many SDN controller options as possible and we're st we've started uh, in the VMware world. So we have a, a nice integration with some of these uh, McAfee products with, uh, with VMware in their NSX environment, which is, which is uh, closed, but it, it works pretty nicely. Cisco, we have an integration with them. With Metacora, obviously, that's why we're here talking. And, uh, and other SDN controllers. We built a very modular uh, architecture for the, for the security controller piece, for the security orchestrator, and that allows us to easily write or work with our partners to easily write plugins to plug into our environment so they can interpret how we want to insert security, the, the nouns and the verbs that we have internally for, for uh, making the right API calls to insert security in a service function chain and for them to go ahead and implement that. Uh, so, so it's very easy and Pino can talk about how easy it is to, to do the integration. And then, like I said, we, on, the, on the top side, on the northbound side, we want to, our goal is to bring as many virtual security functions as possible onto this platform and allow them to get access to all of the types of environments that we cover. Okay, and all running on Intel architecture, of course. So, uh, one of the other things that, that, uh, that I'll talk about before we hand it over to, uh, to Pino to talk about the, the, I guess, the nuts and bolts of, the, of how all the, all the sausage is made in the background, um, is, uh, the security controller allows you to do this really nice abstraction that I talked about. And one of the key points there is that a lot of people, you know, are running, when I talk to customers, they're, they're running multiple stacks. And, you know, those stacks have their own keystone, they may have, and their own Nova and Neutron controllers and pieces. And the security that you need in your data center should not be isolated to a single stack where you need to manage the security 
the network security there in that individual stack separately, it should be uniformly available to all of these stacks. And that's an a, piece, a, a, a layer of abstraction and a feature that the security controller provides. It can connect to multiple uh, OpenStack stacks and their SDN controllers and make the secu same security uniformly available to all of them simultaneously with the same step that you can set it up for one, which is uh, the type of automation and leverage that you really are looking for in a cloud uh, environment. Okay, so uh, the, way that we, the way that we do this is we register what we call a distributed appliance with all of these data centers. And more or less that has a, an image associated with the appliance with the security function that we hold in a uh, security function catalog. And that image is registered with Glance and then in each of these stacks and then can be uh, deployed via Nova API calls from the security controller directly when you say I want to deploy this appliance to all of these different stacks. ISC makes the, the necessary calls. And it also connects to the, um, the manager, the service manager, right? So this manager is unique to each function, each security function. If you think about IPS, uh, Intrusion Prevention System, or IDS, they, these are systems that generate a lot of alerts. They have sensors, these network sensors that sit in the network and sniff traffic or are in line in L2, insert, in L2 service insertion type deployment mode. And they're sitting there, they're, they're looking at traffic, they're making decisions about whether to allow or deny traffic to pass through them. And they're also alerting someone in a security operations center saying, hey, this is malicious software that's, that's being uh, emitted from one IP address or VM in, your, in this environment to another. This VM is trying to attack this other VM and, and I want you to know about it. So uh, those types of alerts, that connection between, between the virtual IPS instances in, in this particular example that I'm talking about, need to be conf they need to be authenticated back to their manager. They need to know where to send the alerts. And similarly, the security person, the security administrator, needs to have a place, a central place where he can create policy and then disperse that policy down to the associated instances that are providing the actual uh, security service. And so we're, we're enabling that connection in mass. Think about trying to, if, you think, uh, if you've ever worked with these IPS func uh, physical functions in the real world, you have to authenticate them to the manager one by one. Uh, imagine doing that a thousand times. You'd go crazy. So we can do it, you know, click, uh, well, what is that? Snap of a finger, click of a button. It's all the same, right? So very, very easily, that's the point. Um, and so we also connect to the manager to, to enable this communication. And in the particular case of, uh, of the Intel security appliances that we have with our initial integration, um, it's the same manager that manages the physical appliances. So there really should be no difference between managing physical appliance or managing a federation of virtual instances that we call a distributed virtual appliance. Okay. So one of the things that, uh, how this works, we can think about it from a logical perspective, like we're drilling down and down and down into this uh, platform and how we're doing things, right? Is that we have a construct for grouping VMs or workloads within the Intel security controller appliance. And so it, they're logical groups. It doesn't matter what network these things are connected to. Um, you can, they can be a dynamic group that's based on a whole tenant, OpenStack tenant, or you know wh whatever, whatever you want to do, a, a tenant network or just a list of VMs that can be static. And so this security controller, right, like I said, connects to this appliance manager and then through OpenStack deploys virtual instances. Now, if you've if you ever looked at any of uh, VMware's stuff for NSX, they talk about micro-segmentation. So as far as I know, you know there isn't really uh, an allegory to micro-segmentation in a strict sense for, for service insertion uh, in OpenStack like there is in the VMware ecosystem. And that's what we've brought here, is that anywhere that you can draw one of these, uh, these logical boundaries, create one of these groups here, you can say, I want to put IPS service and I want to have the specific IPS policy inspecting traffic that is transiting that logical edge. And in the background, ISC works with MeterNet to make that happen. So now I'm going to pass it over to, uh, to Pino to talk about how, how that actually works, this, how the service insertion, the service function chaining works.
Thanks, Jacob. All right, so uh, I'm here to tell you about Mironet's service function chaining capabilities. I want uh, you know, some takeaways uh, for you are that Mironet is open source. The service function, cha uh, service function chaining capabilities that I'm going to talk about are already in Mironet released. Um, and if you want to try them out, you can download Mironet from Mironet.org. Um, so let's see. So first of all, here, let's see, is a pointer working here? Yeah. Good. So before we describe things, remember this concept of the group. Okay, so um, workload groups are going to be associated with policies, okay? And before you associate groups with policies, you define the policies. So remember those two steps. Define the policies, then associate workload groups with policies. Is it um, right, right, right arrow? Ah, right arrow. Okay, I can understand. There it is. Oh, you went through a few animations there. There you go. Ah, I spoiled it. Okay, so um, up here on your right um, is Intel, secu Intel Security Controller. And what you're seeing here is that it has, via the management plane, access to the service VM here. And it can configure policies this way. So the very first thing that happens is before any workloads are set up and any policies are bound, the Intel Security Controller will map policies to VLANs. It can do other things, but we work with VLANs in Mironet at the moment in the first version of the service function chaining API. Um, now, uh, before we go, go further, let me point out the service function okay, has t two ports in this model. It has a port for managing it and changing the, the, um, the policies or for setting the policies and binding the policies to VLANs, but also for the service VM to talk back via the management network to um, the um, security managers, okay, that can actually uh, uh, collect the events and, and, and do correlations and so on. Um, the next thing that happens is when the policy is bound to a workload group, the effect should be that the v virtual machines in that workload group are protected. And how can they be protected? It's by redirecting their traffic through the service VMs, meaning the security functions. In order to do that, Intel Security Controller makes an API call to Mironet. Okay, now in the future it should be the service function chaining API in Neutron and then Mironet would just implement that via a Neutron plugin. But that doesn't exist today upstream, we're working on it and as soon as it exists then we will be implementing it and ISC will talk to OpenStack Neutron. Um, Neutron then goes and programs, uh, excuse me, Mironet, Mironet goes and programs this service, fun service chaining logic. And what I want to point out here is that we've inserted the service function chaining logic between the VM and the port firewall. <coughs> Okay, and that's true in both cases, in the service VM and the port, the, 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 the uh, workload port. So, um, if there's a flow that starts, uh, packets are flowing from the VM out, sorry, wrong, wrong button, what happened? So the VM emits a packet, and the service chain chaining logic will intercept it, and tag it. Now it does two things. It tags it with a VLAN, which it was told to do by, um, by the ISC, okay? A VLAN for the policy of the workload group to which this VM belongs. And the PCP field in the, um, in the, the, VLAN, ta in the VLAN header is used to signal that the, that the packet is going away from the VM, not coming towards the VM, okay? That's important. So VLAN tag signals the policy, and actually you'll see, you'll see on the way back that if, if the um, service VM allows the packet, so the, um, uh, the MAC address of the packet is used to connect back to where the packet was redirected from. In other words, in this model, we're using a layer two model, we're using MAC addresses to identify this, the chain, the service chain, to, that, to, um, that is redirecting traffic. Okay, there are other models too, but right now this is what we're using. So, um, the service chaining logic strips the VLAN and reinserts the packet back where it came from. And again, it's the VLAN, excuse me, it's the MAC address that allows us to know that the traffic was coming from this VM and so we bring it back to this VM. On the return path, packet comes back, it comes through the port level firewall, it's intercepted by the service chaining logic, it is again redirected, this time, so same VLAN tag because we're 
talking about the same policy that's protecting this VM and its workload group. And the PCP field this time is set to a different value, which indicates to us this is going towards the VM. And if, the, if, the, if it's allowed, then the packet on the return path is again intercepted, the VLAN tag is stripped, and it's reinserted at the point where it was redirected away. So it arrives at the VM. At some point later in time, the um, service VM might decide that this is a, uh, uh, an, attack, uh, an attack flow. So for example, uh, someone trying to run a script here on a, on a web server. So the service VM blocks the packet. And now in all packets in that direction will be intercepted. And the same is true of all packets in the other direction for that one flow. All right, so then if, if the service VM fails, okay, there are two modes. There's a mode where the service is down. It's not there to protect the VMs anymore. If you can't guarantee, if you want to be strict about, about security and you can't guarantee that the packets are being, are being filtered and, and, and uh, um, that they're safe, then all traffic should stop. So they're all blocked right there. But if you want uh, a higher availability mode and you're willing to sacrifice some safety for high availability, then if the service VM fails, we can redirect the traffic away from the, the, uh, the, um, uh, the service. And this is, this is kind of cool because this is reactive. It's showing that MetoNet is actually able to detect that the VM is down and, and, and redirect the traffic. And we can only do this in, in certain cases, and this is an area wh that we're exploring sort of to do more and more and better uh, detection of when is the service really available or not. Um, okay, so then uh, we're talking about chaining here, not just insertion. I've showed you one service, but we can do chains of arbitrary length, and we've tested with two and three, uh, chains of length two and three. So if there are, there are um, um, let's say there are two service functions protecting the port, Okay? And this means basically that the workload of the VM, the workload group of the VM, has been bound to two policies okay? that are both, is that correct? Two policies. And therefore, two um, distributed appliances are protecting the VM. And therefore, the traffic has to go through both appliances. So when the packet is redirected, it's redirected to the first service function with a certain VLAN tag. A, a, uh, the, the, the PCP field saying that it's coming out of the VLAN. And then when it, the service VM allows it, the service chaining logic over here, I'll show you with the pointer here, this service chaining logic is detecting that there's another element in the service chain and therefore redirecting it again. And finally, the return path uh, strips the VLAN and resumes, uh, uh, resumes the packet's path in the logical network. And the, so the, then the port level firewall will be evaluated and then the, 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 the layer two network and layer three router and so on. Um, and here it's the same. So if, if, if there's a failure and the policy has fell open, which means we trade safety for availability, then we dynamically modify the chain for that instance and the, pa the packet, the path skips the failed service function. How am I doing on time? I think you're good still. Yeah? Okay. So, um, so I wanted to show you this very briefly. So this is what the API looks like very n right now. It's very simple. Okay, and we're going, we're going to basically scrap this API later and, and uh, use the full service function chaining API. But this is what we have today, and you can use this. So this layer two insertion object has a protected port. This is the port of the VM that, that where traffic is being redirected from. Uh, the service port is the port of the service that's going to receive the data traffic, okay? That's different from the management port. We don't need to, need to know about the management port in MetoNet. Neutron, uh, we learn about it through Neutron, but it's not special to us. Um, the isolation format, so um, um, the folks at, at Intel Security have, have uh, various ways uh, that they can set up, uh, but we, we currently only do VLAN uh, for, for um, mapping the policy. And then, uh, sorry, that's, that's the isolation tag. The format tells us a little bit about, this is where the PCP bit, the PCP bit is, is set based on this, uh, this format. And the failure policy, we talked about fill open, fill close, and the position, so you can have many of them. You can see here, there's no uh, um, classifier, so we're working on a classifier. And the L2 service object is to indicate that this service port, okay, before we create these service insertion objects, we, we create a, a layer two service object 
to inform MeterNet that this is a special VM, that on this port it should not receive any traffic that's not redirected traffic. Um, so I think that's it, and uh, I'm going to pass it back to Jacob. All right, thanks, thanks, Pino. So what I want to talk about in the remaining time, uh, and then of course give everybody time to ask questions, is a few use cases, and then talk a little bit about deployment and, and how we do this uh, via ISC. So not only can you use Intel Security Controller to create logical groups of workloads, and then bind policy under workloads, and then have the service inserted to protect those workloads as you desire, but we also allow you to deploy virtual network security functions like IPS or NextGen Firewall or WAF or whatever you want um, onto different physical hosts in your environment. So we obtain a list of all the physical hosts and you can deploy into an availability zone, you can deploy onto a specific host, you can deploy one instance, you can deploy 10 instances, you can, uh, what else can you do? You can do a lot of things. You can share them across tenants. So you can share these security VNFs across tenants if you're a managed service provider. That's huge value to you because you only have to run one instance that's consuming resources on your host to protect all of your tenants. So all your tenants traffic can be inspected by different tenant policies, all using the same virtual IPS instance, for example, instead of having to boot up and maintain multiple instances and consume all your compute resources for security, which you don't want to do. So, um, so the deployment, really big piece there. This is kind of how we uh, see things playing out architecturally with the best practices model of deploying one virtual in security instance per host and then letting MetoNet redirect the traffic locally on the hypervisor using their agent in the way that Pino just described. So uh, Intel Security Controller, right, it's its own VM that's, that's doing all of this uh, marionetting, I would say, behind the scenes. Um, it has a UI, but it also is, uh, has a fully open API, so if you want to run your own front end, then go right ahead, and you can set up these, these security groups to help your tenants uh, provision security for themselves as necessary, um, which I think is really nice. Um, one of the other things that, that Pino brought up is that, you know, MetoNet is, is open source. So uh, I'm just anticipating a question later, someone asking me, okay, is Intel Security Controller open source? And right now it's not, uh, but it will be. Um, we know that that's, that's the direction that we want to go in, and uh, we're making the plans and provisions necessary to do that, uh, to help uh, enhance adoption and, and get more people onto the platform. But the platform is open, so we're willing to work with anybody right now who wants to join and then with the knowledge that it will be open source to the community uh, shortly. I think in the, in the release after our end of November release. So just wanted to, to preempt that. But let's talk about uh, multi-tenancy use case. I think that's really relevant to a lot of the people probably in this room, right? You have two tenants. They need to think that they are running in two different clouds that belong to them. Okay, you can use the constructs that we have in ISC, these, what we in the Intel Security Controller call security groups, or in the previous slide were called workload groups, to group an entire tenant's domain, let's say, of VMs. And this is a dynamic group, if you want, um, that will add new workload instances as soon as, that as soon as they get created in a tenant. And at that logical boundary, apply IPS or next gen firewall or whatever type of DPI inspection, and MetoNet in the background is orchestrating all of this. By the way, um, we also have our own uh, kind of home brewed uh, a method for doing service insertion within Neutron, but it's mostly a reference design, I would say, and and uh, um, can only do service chains of one, which is which is good for this uh, for for demo purposes, I would say, but. You know, we, we encourage people going with a fully fledged uh, SDN controller to take care of their networking needs. Um, right, so you can inspect at this logical boundary while knowing all the time that in the practical world, right, you have virtual instances of IPS that are sitting on your compute host and the workloads are commingled on these, on these hypervisors with, throughout your data center, throughout your cloud and that the traffic is being rerouted as necessary to be inspected as necessary anytime that, the, that you need, that it's a traffic that's designated with a specific policy to be inspected, right? And the IPSs know how to interpret that traffic and apply the correct policy, right? 
So this is a, a use case that we hear from time and time again as you know what our customers want to do. And the customers who we're running POCs with right now on this, this is what they want to do. So um, one of the other interesting use cases that I, that I hear about from customers more in the, in, in the provider space um, is, and a lot of people are talking about this, virtual customer premise edge or VCPE. Everybody loves acronyms. So, um, right, so you have a bunch of branch offices. In each branch office, there's a communications closet. That closet has a bunch of fixed function hardware in it. Every time you want to make a change or make a configuration update or do something, you have to send a guy down to go get on the CLI for this box and configure it. And that, uh, and not only and to do that, but install it, and you have to buy all these hardware things from different vendors. Um, and so what I hear from cu my customers when I talk to them in this space is it would be a lot easier if I could deploy a generic x86 Intel server into this closet or a few of them and manage them remotely and install virtual instances of a router, a firewall, an IPS, or some other function, have those managed remotely and be able to do it all from afar, right? So that's something that brings a lot of business value, it cuts a lot of costs, so it helps reduce cost in a lot of cases. And also gives you a lot of flexibility because you're managing remotely and everything software. Like I said, if you need to add another instance of IPS because this office is producing more traffic, there's more throughput, no problem. You don't have to add another physical appliance. All you have to do is boot up another instance. So tell ISC to tell this thing, we want another instance over here. So this is, a, this is another interesting use case. Um, all right, so what, what are the, where do the customers see the benefit? It, it comes down to, to business value, right? So we're making security for attacking this big problem, this visibility hole that people have when they're running their OpenStack clouds, how, seeing what's going on inside from a security perspective. We're bringing the automation and the agility that enables you to really do that. We're enabling customers to dynamically scale out their DPI type advanced security appliances. We're enabling them to map policies to workloads intelligently. And then on the personnel side, because none of this happens in a vacuum, we're enabling the people who work on certain areas like the security admin can continue to do her job of creating policies, looking at alerts, figuring out what actions to take if there are breaches that are detected. And the infrastructure administrator can continue to do his job of dealing with running, you know, running the OpenStack environment, which is a full-time job. So. They don't need to learn all of each other's other functions. So it's really about bringing security to, in an agile way to this agile environment. OK. Um, oh, this slide, huh? So um, we, how much more time do we have? About seven minutes, I think. We're supposed to be done at 510. Seven minutes? OK. All right, so, so Pino already talked about this, so I think I want to skip this slide. Um, but what I do want to talk about is, like I said, you know, one of the take homes is if you're an operator, you should be thinking about how you can bring security inside your cloud and help manage this, this east-west vulnerability. If you're, a, if you're a managed services provider, you should be thinking about how can I provide value-added services like charge my customers more for security. This is how you can do that. If you're a VNF or a security VNF vendor, you could be thinking how can I leverage this Intel security controller platform to make my virtual function orchestratable in mass in this way and leverage all the work they've already done, cover all these environments that are already supported. Okay, so there's value there for those folks. And then if you're a, uh, if you're in Pino's case, if you're a SDN controller vendor, if you're an, inf an infrastructure software piece vendor, you should, I think you should be thinking, okay, well, um, how, you know, I want to make sure that people are, that I'm useful in running all of these virtual functions that I could do service insertion, and we can help do that. So we can help enable you to deal with, v, uh, with NFV, I think, security NFV uh, in, in, a, in an easier uh, and headache, more headache-free way and bring in all of these other security functions on top, to work on top of you, like the Intel ones we've already integrated and like the third-party partners that we're, that we're in discussions with right now. So uh, that said, from the VNF perspective, right, 
there's a few modifications that, that uh, I think one has to make in order to enable an appliance to be orchestrated by ISC. So it has to have a small agent that's running in it that allows it to, uh, to communicate back its health and status and things to the controller. And a small uh, agent that, that allows it to count statistics about what the traffic that's going through it and help in, uh, in managing those things so it can tell the security controller what's going on. So it's really not a lot and we are, uh, have developed, we've already developed these things for our own appliances. We've done a reference implementation with the Snort, you know, open source IPS appliance. And when we open up uh, ISC, we are planning on on releasing these SDKs to help enable uh, the VNF vendors to, to join the platform. Okay, so that's pretty much what I had. Uh, I think we can open it up for questions in the last four minutes. So if you, if you have one, shoot. For me or Pino. Yeah, you can step to the mic or you can just yeah. yell. Okay. Uh, since you are Intel, uh, and Intel has uh, TXT trusted execution for execution and the attestation how does TXT relate into this so that I could have trusted attestation from hardware all the way up? Uh, I, you couldn't have, I couldn't have planted a better question because I'm talking with the TXT team about how we're going to integrate uh, those pieces today. And we see that as, as an important piece to help enable you know, trusted virtual network functions because we're deploying them. And so we should be able to deploy them on trusted compute hosts and then also attest to the fact that this VNF is the same one that you bought from the store. So this is something that we are working on and that will be included in the, uh, in, not in this ISC 2.0 release that's coming out in November, but in the open source version that will be, you know, I think probably in the community. I, I can't really give you a time, but let's say next year at some point. Yeah, you're welcome. Yes, sir. Yes. All right. This is. I think uh, this is for you, probably, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just uh, curious. Uh, so, uh, service, service virtual machine is used to run uh, one of the security appliances, for example, like IPS, uh, uh, IDS, sure. or yeah. whatever. But, but what's the point of uh, putting uh, the firewall and splitting this uh, service management network, service data network, and service VM in different uh, sure. trusted zones? What, what's the point? Sure. So actually. This is just, um, so in Neutron, you get a port level firewall by default. And when you, if, if the APIs allow you to turn off the port level firewall, it's gone. So right now, I believe the API that we were working with, um, Kilo, ah, you know what, I think you may be right. The port level firewall may not be wrong and my drawings may, may be wrong. The Intel security controller has Neutron API. So when it launches this, um, when it launches this um, service function, it has the ability to control the ports, so it can just turn off port level f uh, firewall here. It can use the port security extension to turn off this firewall, and therefore I'll, I'll correct my, my diagram. Thank you. You're, you're right. There's, there's nothing, the, and the only reason, so basically these port level firewalls are here because um, I was thinking that Neutron would put them, by, them there by default, but with the port security extension we can get rid of them, right? Um, this one actually would probably be here at the ma on the management side. This one would not, right? And as for this one, there's, there is a point in having that because that way you have layer four security on your, on your VM, right? Se separate from the, the, um, the service VM. Mm -hmm. that, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah? good good catch. Yeah. Yeah. I, have, I have one more. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, um, you mentioned uh, Makati uh, net network security solution mm -hmm. in that case. And uh, 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 is it uh, agent based? Uh, I, I, I think it, it's based on antivirus. No, so this is uh, this is the, the McAfee network security platform, right? So it's a this it's the service VM, right? So its own VM. It's not running the antivirus engine. It's running a totally different engine that does full deep packet inspection on all the packets and stuff. Uh, it's the it's like the market leading IPS that you can buy, and uh, yeah, so it's a. Does does it communicate to hypervisor or it just uh, communicates to controller? So it doesn't have any uh, direct communication with the hypervisor. It just receives packets from from the service chaining logic in, in MeterNet or from the or from OBS or whatever directly. There's no. It's not doing uh, introspection into any of the other 
guest operating systems adjoining it. So that's it's a separate product that McAfee creates. But this is, you could think about this as just a virtual, like a virtual version of a network IPS, like a box that you would normally plug a bunch of wires into. Only we're doing the wiring all in software and all dynamically through MetoNet, mm -hmm. and um, and it it runs you know really well in the virtual environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think that's it then. That's yeah. yeah, I guess that's Thanks. it. So Thanks if you everyone. have any other questions, you know, feel free to come approach me in the back or up front. We have a we didn't have time to show a demo, but if you want to see a demo of this stuff really working, like it's a real product, you could buy it today. Uh, we uh, we have we we could show you the demo, um, so I'd be, be happy to do that as well. We'll we'll be around. We'll be here all weekend. So just let me know. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone.